Hello and welcome to this video in which we will examine the relationship between position, velocity, and time for a particle whose acceleration is a function of velocity. And we'll do this using a simple example. Uh, the equation we have here where the acceleration is equal to some uh, constant times velocity, and this is negative, this is actually a uh, simple model for what happens with a shock absorber, where the force on the piston in the shock absorber is um, negatively proportional to its velocity, and the acceleration of the piston is proportional to the force. So this uh, actually is uh, a good model for what happens in a simple shock absorber. Now, to do this, uh, we'll actually start off uh, deriving the equations that we'll use to find the relationships between the velocity as a function of time, the position as a function of time, and the velocity as a function of x. We'll actually derive these equations. I'm doing this because um, it seems like it's helpful to understand how these equations are developed so that if you are in a different situation, uh, you can uh, you, you can develop these. Now, if you don't like derivations at all, close your eyes uh, for a minute. It won't be that painful. Okay, so let's begin with um, finding the, uh, the velocity as a function of time. Now, to do this, we'll start by noting that acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to t. And in this problem, we have the acceleration expressed as a function of velocity. So it looks like this. Now, what we'll do then is we'll get all of the time things, which in this case is just the uh, uh, time differential, on one side. And we'll get all the velocity things on the other side. OK, so we have this equation. And we can now integrate this. We'll integrate between 0 and t for time. And we'll integrate between v0. This is the initial velocity at time 0, and some final velocity v. And this expression will give us a relationship between time and velocity. Okay. When we integrate uh, this side of the equation, we get just t. Uh, this side of the equation will take a little bit more work. So we'll rewrite it here. We have v0 to v uh, a, in this case, is 1 over minus kv dv. So this is basically dv over a. And we can factor out the minus 1 over k. And then the integral of 1 over v dv is going to be the natural log, which I'll write as ln, of v evaluated from v0 to v. And I can write this then, if I take into account the negative sign here, as 1 over k times the natural log of v0 minus 1 over k times the natural log of v. And using the property of logarithms, I can write this as 1 over k times the natural log of v0 over v. And I had, again, so, so this is the right-hand side of this equation. You'll remember that I have this is equal to t. And so um, what I can do now is actually solve for v. And doing that will give me v as a function of t. So the first thing to do is take this k and put it over here so that we have then um, kt is the natural log of v0 over v. Now if I take both sides of this equation and raise e to each side, I will have um, the following. I'll have e to the kt is equal to v0 over v. 
And you can see that I'm close, but I have the thing I want, which is V on the bottom. So I'll just flip things, well, uh, let's, you know, I'll just flip things over and I get E. So basically I'm taking one over this and one over this. I get E to the minus KT is equal to V over V0. Finally, I can write V of T because this is now a function of T. You can see that V is a function of T is V0 E to the minus KT. So what this says is that when the acceleration is a negative constant times v, the velocity as a function of time is the initial velocity times e to the minus kt. So I've graphed this. So this is a representation of v of t uh, for the case where v0 is 20 and um, this would be 20, say, meters per second or feet per second, depending on uh, what we're doing, and the case where k was equal to 1. And you can see that it's just a decaying exponential. Uh, this is time. So as time goes forward, we have a decaying exponential. Okay, so hopefully you found that most enjoyable. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is we'll find uh, we found v of t. Let's now find uh, x of t. And to do that, we'll clear off some workspace here, we'll use the relationship between x and v that x of t is the integral from time 0 to t of v and I'll call this variable of integration t prime to hopefully reduce the level of confusion. Um, so basically, a position is the integral of velocity. And in this case, this gives me then the integral from 0 to t of, whoops, and I also left off the initial position. So it's the integral from 0 to t of v0 e to the minus kt prime dt plus my initial position. Okay. And when I work this integral out, I'm not going to go through um, all of the steps, but I get then this is x0 plus v0 over k of 1 minus e to the minus kt. Okay, so that's, I get uh, this term here by working this integral. Okay, so I get basically then a, a function that's increasing, uh, I call this an exponentially increasing function, but you need to be careful about this because uh, that's probably the wrong thing to call it. It looks like this. Okay, so it starts at 0, this is x of t. It starts at 0, and as time goes on, it asymptotically approaches v0 over k, which in this case is 20. So there you have it, x of t. So the last thing that we're going to find then is v as a function of x. And this one involves a little bit more complexity. Uh, again, we'll start off with a differential equation that relates uh, the acceleration, the velocity, uh, dx and dv, and then integrate both sides. Okay, and to get that equation, we'll go through the following algebraic exercise. We know that the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. So what this says then is that the differential of time is equal to the differential of position over velocity. Whoops, I'm sorry. This guy does not say this. I'm sorry. We have v is dx dt. And this relationship between velocity and position allows me to say that dt is uh, dx over v. So now if I take dt from here and plug it in here, I have a is equal to dv 
over dx over v, okay, which I can rewrite as v dv dx. Now, for this case, or again for this problem, you'll remember that the acceleration is a function of velocity. So I'll get all of the x dependent things, which is dx on one side, and all of the velocity dependent things on the other side. So I'll have v over a, which is a function of v, dv. Okay, and now I can integrate this equation. On this side, I'll integrate from an initial position to a final position. On this side, I'll integrate from an initial velocity to a final velocity. Okay, and now we can solve this for our particular case. Uh, you'll recall that a of v, this guy is minus kv. So if I plug this minus kv in here, I have then the integral from v0 to v of 1 over minus k dv, which, so, so this turns out to be a fairly easy integral to work, as does this. So I work both integrals, and on the left-hand side, I have x minus x0 is equal to um, uh, minus 1 over k v minus v0. Okay, and now I can solve this for v to get uh, a function of x. So I multiply both sides by negative k and add v0. So I end up with v, again, which is a function of x because we'll get everything but uh, v on the other side, and the only other th variable is an x. So v of x is negative, no, it's, uh, well, negative k times x minus x0 plus v0. And I can rewrite this, I guess, as uh, k x0 minus x plus v0, okay? So that gives me the relationship between velocity and position, okay? Um, now, x0 typically will be smaller than x if I assume that um, my particle is moving towards the right. So basically what will happen is um, the velocity as a function of x will decrease as x increases. So I think I've graphed this. Yes, it looks like this. So as x increases, the velocity decreases, okay, which hopefully makes sense to you. So I'm out of time. Uh, to summarize, uh, again, we found the velocity as a function of time and position as a function of time and velocity as a function of position for the case when the acceleration is a function of velocity. And we've also derived the equations and used the process that you would use to solve these equations. Uh, again, uh, there's no way to get around working integrals in this case. Uh, you'd plug in the particular function you have for a of v into the integral equations that we, sh that we developed and solve them. So hopefully you found this useful. Thanks for watching.